<laughs> so, so here we have Nancy Pelosi uh, praising Liz Cheney for her courage and for her patriotism. I do commend Lynn Cheney for her courage, for her patriotism, and uh, I wish her well. Now, I, I really don't know what to call this, but I suppose if I had to give a name to it, it would be the kiss of death. The Republican leadership under um, uh, McCarthy is uh, seriously considering booting Liz Cheney out of her number three position in the House leadership. I think that's going to happen. It's going to happen promptly. But um, if anything is going to make it happen even more surely and faster, it is the opposition um, party <laughs> leader, Nancy Pelosi, uh, saying nice things about you. Why? Because it's very clear that um, for Pelosi, Liz Cheney is kind of her, you may say, house pet. She loves having that kind of opposition. It offers no serious threat to what she's really up to. But what's up with Liz Cheney? Um, it's not that Liz Cheney is a, um, is a Romney. Uh, Romney, of course, was pro-choice before he became pro-life. He was for a version of Obamacare before he opposed, you know, Obamacare. So Romney has always been genuinely a, a rhino, a Republican in name only, but, but not Liz Cheney. Liz Cheney is actually quite conservative across the board. I think that what's going on with Liz Cheney, well, first of all, what she says about all this um, is quite clearly absurd. Oh, it's all the election doubts are all a big lie and we can't sanction the big lie and blah, blah, blah. This is all nonsense for the simple reason that, quite honestly, most Republicans, most conservatives, me included, uh, we're not deniers about the election. You know what we are? We're sort of agnostics. And here's what we mean. We do think that there were suspicious things that happened in the 2020 election. Not just the vast majority of tens of millions of mail-in ballots, but the mysterious simultaneous stopping of the counting in all the independent and all the sort of swing states at the same time. How did that occur? What kind of coincidence does it have to be for independent states, all managed by different groups to decide at the exact moment to stop counting? Who gave that order? Number two, a second thing that fortifies our doubts is quite simply all the post-election censorship. It's one thing to say uh, that there's fraud or shenanigans in the election. It's another thing to say you can't even talk about it because if you talk about it, you're going to be banned. The intensity of the desire to shut people up is in and of itself an indication that something has gone on. If not, what's there to fear from audits and what's there to fear from what's happening in Maricopa? There's nothing to fear. Let's have it all out. No. So the bottom line of it is this is not what it's about. I think ultimately for Liz Cheney, what it is about is a family vendetta, just like it is really for the Bushes. Trump basically made Dick Cheney look ridiculous by making him out to be a warmonger. And this is part of Trump. He does strafe his opponents. He, he humiliates them to a degree. And Liz Cheney, out of sort of family loyalty, uh, this sort of uh, devotion to the Cheney name, uh, just can't get over it. This is why she's really willing to throw away her career uh, by hanging recalcitrant and firm. This is really what's at issue. The same reason, for example, that the Bushes turned against Trump. It's basically because he made Jeb feel stupid. He made him feel humiliated, low energy Jeb. And so and we see in the Republican Party, there are other people, Marco Rubio. Uh, it's to Ted Cruz's great credit that he was able to transcend the personal kind of vendetta-ish elements. But unfortunately, when it comes to the Bushes and even Liz Cheney, they would rather go up in flames before they do that.